A few things I'd like to share first. It was a couple of weeks ago, I had a kind of a pain on my stomach and for a bit, and I just was coming by, and there was Sarah and Sharon said, what's the matter with you? I said, oh, but this pain on my stomach, I don't know what's, what's the matter. So they said, okay, we'll pray for it. So they prayed for it, and I said, Lord, I accept it. And I went home, and I haven't taken any tablets since then. So that's good. It means never shy away from praying for something or somebody. Because remember, it is not you who do the work. It's the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we are only honoring the Holy Spirit to do the work for us. I'm preaching, but I'm not preaching if the Holy Spirit doesn't give me the preaching to preach for. You understand that? A few weeks, a couple of weeks ago, I had a dream. I should have shared it last week, but I didn't. Suddenly, I was, my spirit was lifted up. And I stood on the higher place. In front of me, there was a beautiful avenue. Two lane on one side and two lane on the other. It was a middle divider filled with flower. And the side of the avenue was filled with beautiful trees. But it was going so fast by me that I couldn't really recognize the trees. Neither I could see every so often there was a pole in the middle, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And I was, as I was looking, I was thinking of what kind of vision that was it. And a voice said to me, he said, the avenue is the time of the world. The trees are the nations of the world. Those poles that you have seen in the middle, they are my people who are willing to share what I have given them. The light that they will show is a light that comes from the Holy Spirit. And the day is going to come very soon where the shining light of those poles within those three that they will flood the nations of the world. And I said, how long it will be, Lord? And he said, the reason why you saw in the beginning going so fast, it is because the time is at hand, and it's very short, and it's coming soon. I believe that something is coming soon very quickly. I believe that Jesus is planning the things in order to come and set up his kingdom here on earth. I believe that the Lord is preparing some of us, or some of you who are younger, to be the shining light to flood the trees of the nations, in order that when they are flooded, then Jesus will be free to come and set up his kingdom. As I was thinking about this thing, I was thinking that the day of restoration is going to come. For this is going to, when Jesus comes to the world and set up his kingdom, it will be a restoration. And I was thinking about the restoration that was going to come soon, and a scripture came to me. It is found in Luke chapter 9, 23, and is repeated again in Matthew 16, 24, and in Mark 8, 34. And the scripture is, doesn't seem to have anything to do with what I had in mind, but it came very strongly to me. And Jesus said unto them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and daily follow me. I believe that this is true more than any other time. At this time in which we are living in, which are the last days, 
of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to pick up the cross in order to flood the nations with the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The key word in this particular scripture, and I'll get there, don't just worry about it. The key word about this, this particular verse, the key word is to deny himself. He will, after me, let him deny himself. Now, we know what the word deny means. If I want to go on a diet, I have to deny myself of what? Sweets, ice cream, bread, and many other things in which I have to deny myself in order to achieve something. We, the Bible tells us that we have to deny ourselves in order to achieve something. And this morning we have to decide what do we want to achieve. If we want to achieve the fullness of the power of God in our midst, then we have to deny ourselves of something. When Tuesday night comes, no matter what kind of program is on TV, he, I will deny myself of those programs because I am going to go into the prayer meeting. I am denying myself on Sunday morning. No matter who is on TV or whatever is going to happen or whoever is coming to visit me because I'm going to go to church and meet with the brothers and sisters in the presence of the Lord. I must deny myself something. If I want to achieve, uh, uh, if I want to achieve something, those who are in sport, they have to deny man, many things in order to exceed what they are playing in their sport. And according to the sport, of course, they have to deny. As a Christian, I must deny my understanding to start with. For my understanding will lead me to the wrong direction. The Bible tells it very clear that I must trust in the Lord and not into my own understanding. Because if I trust in my own understanding, I trust in what is my experience is, in what I know and what I have learned and what the world has told me and what my family has told me. But if I trust in the Lord, I all understand in what the Holy Spirit is giving me. I must understand. I must deny something. Some, something. If I want to achieve and believe, then I must deny my understanding and pick up in full strength the power of the understanding of the Word of God. There are other scriptures, of course, which they are there. I'm not going to go through all of them, otherwise we stay here too long. I, the next thing that I must de deny as my Christian, it is not the ice cream by all means. God doesn't care if you have ice cream and if you like chocolate or if you like, um, it's like some people I know, or if you like some other kind of uh, flavor. God really is not interested in that kind of stuff. You might like a roast, I might like spaghetti and meatballs, but it, it, God doesn't really worry about those things. But I must deny something. Not only my understanding, because I have to de I have, I must I must put my understanding in the Lord. But I must deny my feeling so that my feeling will come not by what I think, but they will come by the word of God. I must deny my feeling and trust on the word of God. For the word of God is true. My feeling will deny my feeling will try take me in the wrong spot. I must deny myself. It is what I want to achieve. So if I deny my feeling, then I will accept the word of God. And if I accept the word of God, it is going to happen because it is written. And whatever is written is going to happen. It cannot change. But my feeling do. Today I feel like 150. Tomorrow I feel I'm 16 year old. But it doesn't make me 150. It doesn't make me a 116 year old. 
It makes me what I am and that's it. And the word of God said that what I am, that's what I am. And therefore I must not be relying on my feeling, but by, 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 but, uh, but by the word of God, by, by all things and above all things. God must come first in our life if we want to achieve. God has to be supreme in our life if we want to achieve. In the, gospel, in the uh, book of Exodus, very clearly, the Lord gave uh, the law to, the, to his people and he said, Thou shalt have no other God before me. No matter who they are, no matter what they are, we must deny those, those things in order that we will have God. He must be supreme. If we want to achieve a revival, then God has to be supreme in our life. If we want to achieve the fullness of the presence of the Holy Spirit, then we, God must be first in our life. We must deny our knowledge. For our knowledge must be not in what we le learn in books. You might go to universities, you might have had five, six years of university, but I have found that a lot of people that had five, six years of university, when you talk to them, they are just... A... They don't know the most important thing in life. Why? Because they had learned from the book. They learn from what somebody else has been telling them. But those books and what other people will tell you, they can be true sometimes, but they can be also lie. You cannot rely on what people tell you. You must rely on what the Word of God tells you. I can tell you that you're the best person in the world, but you must rely on the fact that if you want to be the best, you must be the humblest before the presence of God and the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that true? So we must deny ourselves. That is a very important thing that we must do. Those things are important that we deny them. We must deny our fears. We must deny our doubts. We must rest upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I know of the history of many people who have served God in their life that most of them, they will tell you that they have learned how to rest in the Lord and just let everything else go by. That is important. That's what the Lord wants us from us. Let us look for a moment at the cross. I'm not there yet. That was only the introduction. Let us look at the cross for a moment. The cross in the material sense, it was the most devastating effect on the life of a person. The cross was degradation. The cross in the material, it is humiliation. It's the worst thing, the penalty that can be given to a person. It was the cross in those days. The cross is sacrifice. It is pain. It's hardship. When the nails are going through your your hands in order to keep you tied into the wood of the cross. That is pain. When you're standing there bleeding and all people are looking upon you and you're standing there half naked, that is degradation. So the cross, it is penalty. The, the cross is a, a de a degradation. Sacrifice. It is a suffering. It is a hardship. But most of all, in the human sense, the cross is death. Once you are on the cross, you do not come down alive. You die. No one has ever gone to the cross and come down alive, etc. 
So degradation, the death, the cross in the material, it's only degradation at the end is dead. Dead, death, it is the end of all things. Satan was extremely happy when Jesus died on the cross. Because he knew that now he had all his power, that he had got away, he had got from Adam. He stole Adam all of that power. Now Jesus had come to restore that power, but now he's dead on the cross, and the devil knew that that power was still in his hand. But was it? Was it still in his hand? Because the cross is not just a material thing. Something that we look at every morning, uh, every Sunday that we come to church, we talk about the cross because we take the communion. But the cross has got also a spiritual side of it, in which is more important to us than the material side, because we are no material people, we are spiritual people. And therefore, we look at the cross not longer in a material way as death and degradation, but we look at the cross with something that is more powerful. For the cross was a war in the spiritual. The cross was the war, a spirit, was a, a warfare war against the power of the enemy, against Satan and all of his power. It was a, it, it was a fight to the death in which Jesus had conquered. By being resurrected. Why? Because the blood which is the life of the body was all drained out. The body had no more life. But the body, but the dead blood that was shed, it was not wasted, but it went straight into the throne of God, into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, into the presence of God the Father. It was there for a payment for our sins. It was there for the payment of our problems and our troubles. It was there so Jesus said, this is my blood, I am paying for his problem. I'm paying for his problem. I'm paying for her problem. And I'm paying for my problem. And I'm glad for that. Spiritually, it was a warfare. The, victor, the cross in the reality of the spiritual, it was not death. But it was a victory over the curse of death. Because death came to Adam. But life came through the Lord Jesus Christ. Adam brought us only but death. He was cursed by death. And that curse was still here until 2,000 years ago. Then Jesus, brought, Jesus cleaned up the curse. That curse is not there no longer. Therefore, we are living and living by the kingdom of God and for the glory of God. John eleven twenty six says, Whosoever believeth, liveth and believeth in me shall never die. <laughs> you know, in five days I'm going to be 86 years old. Five days. But those, uh, those years, they will go and they will pass away and there is few more coming. I have no idea. The Lord never told me that. And somehow when I asked him, he never gave me an answer. I just wonder why. The cross, it is a spiritual victory over the warfare against the enemy, against the devil, against death. And because, of, uh, because he was resurrected, death was this, uh, uh, the curse of death was completely finished, and now there is only life and life eternal. The cross was also in the spiritual, the unification of the universe. When God created the earth or the solar system, he got Adam and he said, you are the ruler over this. You are the custodian of this thing here. I want you to take care of it. And Adam, of course, he got Eve. 
And the two of them, they were ruling over the creation that God had created for them. Suddenly, the, the, the serpent, serpent came in. And when he came in, he said, uh, he, 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 he confused them a little bit. He confused the words and he took away the power in which God had given to Adam. Adam was clothed with the glory of God. He, we don't know if he was wearing clothes or not, but I don't think so. I think that he was surrounded by the glory of God and therefore he was not naked. You know, the scientists tell us that the more spiritual you are, the more devoted to God you are, and more round of glory you have around you. They have found it through the emperor, ray, whatever they call it. So the more spiritual you are, the more you are clothed with the glory of God. And Adam was clothed with the glory of God by the presence of God. But suddenly, he, when he lost that power that God had given him, he found himself naked. So he tried the remedy, but it didn't work. You know the story. When Jesus died on the cross, he went down to the devil and he said, Now you give me the key. And I'm taking over. I'm taking over everything you have stolen from my brother Adam. I'm taking it. For I want the victory on the cross. So he took whatever the devil has stolen. And let not the devil tell you that he's got a lot of power. He doesn't have any power because all power has been given unto the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the cross. He said, that all power has been given unto me. So he had, uh, he had uh, the, the power and the universe, the earth, the solar system. It was divided from the presence of God. Now, by the power of the cross, has been restored into the universe of the creation of God to become part of the glorious glory that God has created. Now we are part of it. You say, but it doesn't look like we are. It's just a matter of time. We live on time. God lives in eternity. So whatever he said is done. No matter what you do, it's done. No matter what you think, it's done. And so the creation universe has been created. Jesus said, Luke 10, 8. And he said unto them, I beheld such Satan as a lightning fall from heaven. It's done. It's happened. It's already finished. He fell from heaven. Jesus took over. Isn't that great? <laughs> you don't have to fear for him. And you know you don't have to fear for him. I have, through my ministry, I have many, many times of been into face to face with witchcraft or whatever it might be and uh, you know that they don't live in your world you know that they cannot come into your world they can only come as close as certain point then they cannot come in because you live in a world which is different from their world and therefore they have no power over you isn't that great that is because of the cross the victory of the cross is that 10,000 upon 10,000 have, have been saved by the power and the glory of the cross. He came in to establish his kingdom on earth, and he did. We have today, today, over 700 million born-again Christians in the world today. It seems a lot, but my friend, it's not a lot. Because in the Bible say that there will be thousands and upon thousands and upon thousands who are before the throne of God, praising and glorify the presence of the Lord. Therefore, there must be much, many more people coming. There must be a flood. He has made us 700 million people. That includes you and me. He filled them with the Holy Spirit. And he has made them king and priest. 
for the glory of God. You know you are a king and a priest, a king to rule and a priest to worship. Let's be before the presence of God. Hmm. And behold, I heard a great voice from many angels around the throne. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a meeting that is going to be. And my friend, that is going to be a meeting in the air. There is going to be a meeting in the air. It will happen in the clouds. When the, the trump of God will sound. And you know the scripture. And we will be there with the Lord. I'm going to go to be there. And I will not miss that meeting. There is going to be a church meeting upon all kind of church meeting that you ever seen before. The musicians will not be those. It's okay. Those are tremendous. I love them. But the music up there will be a different kind of music. The angels will be singing, and the angels are the ones who will be playing the music in that meeting in the air. I'm going to be there, my friend, and thousands upon thousands of people will be there. Those who are dead will be raised again. Those who are alive will be translated, and I, boy, I want to be translated, because this body is failing me very quickly and very fast, and I need a new body, and I'm just waiting for the moment that I'm going to get that new body where I can shout and sing before the presence of God once more, and that is going to be in that meaning in the air before the presence of God there will be thousands of people there will be white people there will be black people there will be yellow people there will be red people and any kind of people that you can think of they will be there before the presence of God standing in the clouds before the present listening to the angels singing the glorious the glorious uh, uh, the music of God and my friend I want to you you I want want you to be there because I know that the speaker is not going to be Neil neither is going to be Joseph but the speaker in that meeting is going to be Jesus Christ himself the son of God hallelujah I want to be there I want to listen to him I want to hear from him that is the meeting that I am waiting for the absolute the glorious the most wonderful meeting that will ever come. It is on that meaning that Jesus will see all of those people around him. And then he will look up and he will say, I will say to the Father, he will say to the Father, these are those who I have bought with my blood. They were yours, but you have given them to me. Now, Father, I bring them to you. You will be introduced to the Father. I will be introduced to the Father. Then that day, now I know him as a glass, through a glass, just like vision, something far away. But in that day, I will see him face to face the way he is. And I will know him. And I will glorify him. And I will take the crown upon my head and put it upon his, put it upon his throne and glorify him forever and forever. Jesus will do that. At that meeting in the air. And then we'll be with the Lord forevermore. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, why do you want to follow anybody else? Nobody has something so glorious and wonderful like Jesus died. The cross, the cross made God, reunited me to God the Father. Now, even before I go and see him face to face, I can call him Father because he is my Father through the cross. Jesus said, John 20, 17, the first message that Jesus gave to his disciple was, I am ascending to the Father, and from now on, your Father. That's what he said. It is written here. 
if it's written, it's done. And Harry said, I have sent to my father and your father, my God and your God, the cross made father to us, restore our fellowship with the father. So many people today, they grow up in the world, they have never known a father, they don't know what the father is like. But that day, they will know him. Through Jesus Christ, we have been restored. Restored to be with the Father. He gave us through the cross, he gave us back everything that he had stolen from Adam. Oh, time is gone. Now it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, that's the scripture that I was quoted before. I'm not going to go into it. And so shall we be with him, with the Lord, forevermore. Very questionable. I spoke to many people and said, what's going to happen when we are going to be with the Lord? Somebody said one thing, somebody said another. Suddenly, certainly, I'm not going to be sitting on a cloud playing an ark. I'm not very musician inclined. Therefore, I don't think the Lord is going to give me that kind of a job. That's not what I'm going to do. Definitely, I am not. I'm inquisitive. I want to know. And I want to know more what is the creation of God and what God has, uh, what God has done. One thing is true. It's true and true that he will, uh, he will give us back what the devil has stolen to Adam. He will be just living in the Garden of Eden. Uh, it's the only way I can look at that we will be just living in the Garden of Eden. We will have all of the power and the glory in there which God had given to Adam. I know of somebody, he likes my shirt. I can give it to him. Because when I'm going up there, I'm going to have that glow. Two or three glows. I don't need it shirt anymore. The clothes will be there to clothe me like a clothed Adam and Eve when they were in the Garden of Eden. What a glorious manifestation of God and the glory of God that we have. What a beautiful future that we have in our, before us before Jesus comes, when Jesus comes. We will be seated with him together seated before the presence of God. I am going to be there. There will be thousands upon thousands of people that are going to be there. I'm not going to be by myself. There will be many people. Where will you be? Where is your destination? Have we picked up our cross and followed him? That is what we must do. Even if it takes some denying ourselves for something. But the cost, the ending is much more glorious than whatever we are going to deny ourselves here on earth. I'm going to be there. I am going to be there. Where will you be? Come. Where will you be? I hope that I will meet you there in the meeting in the air with the presence of the Lord. Will you deny yourself of something? God bless you. That's up to you and the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Joe. <clears throat> Let me follow on from that question and just ask, if you have never received Christ, if you have never asked Jesus into your heart and your life, if you've never said, yeah, I, I want to know him, I want to walk with him, I want you to, and you would like to, yes, and you want to, just give me a wave. I'd love to pray with you. I don't know you're all here, but I just want to ask you, give you that opportunity. I wonder if you'd just pray with me, church. 
and pray for those that don't know him. And uh, there are plenty of people in the community that don't know him. Whether they're here or not, we're going to pray for our community. Will we, will we just spend a minute in prayer, praying for the Sunshine Coast, for all those that don't know him would come to him. Father, we pray for our community. We pray for the lost, Father. We pray, and, and right now, as that message has gone out here, we put it out in the spirit, and we pray for those, Father, for the multitudes to come to you. As Joe has spoken about that vision of multitudes, thousands upon thousands upon thousands standing before the throne, there are thousands in this community that are yet to come to you, and we pray for them, Lord. We pray for their salvations. Come on, church, lift your voice with me. Father, we pray that you'd move upon them. We pray that they would come to know you and come to know you soon, that you'd move by your spirit upon them to draw them to you, to bring them into the kingdom. Father, we believe for the fulfillment of that which you've written, that many would come to Christ, and we believe you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, church, God bless you. Have a fantastic week. If anybody needs prayer, Joe is here to pray for you. We'll pray for you believe God for you. And uh, that God is good. Remember, God is smiling at you.